gets the cover. Hook in the leg. He did it. He did it. How's it going? It's Brian Socia here on the Socia Network. A very special visitor tonight, SmackDown in town, and I'm so happy to have him here. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry. How you doing, Mark? What's going on, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Besides a little gimpy arm. Yeah, how you feeling with that arm? Well, I, I know better when I go get an MRI. I'm leaving to get an MRI and x-rays after I leave here. All right, we'll make this quick because, I mean, this might be the first interview you're doing. We appreciate this exclusive interview with us right after Brock Lesnar pretty much snapped your arm. And I hope it's not broken, but we're going to uh, wait for it, word. It, it, I, don't, I didn't feel like a snap or nothing. You know, I'm just it just uh, uh, felt it, like it popped in, popped back. You know, it just it, it, it wasn't a good it wasn't a good feeling. Well, you know from injuries, uh, being in the industry for so long, we don't want to speculate because that could just – mindset's going to mess it all up. So let's let's try to not focus on the arm for now and try to think of uh, some better things. Some some things uh, – when you first got into this industry, when you first started your career. Now, a lot of people know that you were in the Olympics, all right? And, and then WWE decided to sign you, and uh, we talked earlier. And your debut – I remember I was there. It was Mind Games in Philly, and I think it was 1996, I believe, against Jerry Lawler. Yeah. You came out, the red, white, and blue – but before all that happened, we've seen people crash and burn when they get into pro wrestling because they're just not ready. Now, you're a strong guy, but it takes some finesse, too, in wrestling. Where did you get your start? Were you trained? How did that all come about? Uh, actually, I, I wasn't. Um, at that point, uh, I probably had like two matches and three or four weeks of training. And, um, you know, man, that was like a... Probably the scared, most scared I'd ever been because I, I didn't really understand that world as a performer, only as a fan. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, at one point I remember throwing Jerry Lawler so hard that he didn't touch either rope. He just went straight through and hit the barricade. <laughs> I bet you love that. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure he did. Um, but it was it was uh, that was it was a, every night was a learning experience. I enjoyed every minute of it. Were the, what were the nerves like? I mean, your debut match, especially in Philadelphia, I mean, let's be honest, hard town to please sometimes. Were you a little nervous? Did you even know that, or were you just ignorant to it? You know, I it? was too, uh, too new and too green to even realize that the the pressures, because, I, I mean, being an uh, Olympic, Olympic lifter and a power lifter, um, I lifted in front of people and competed, mm-hmm. and uh, I knew how to block everything out. And uh, that was that was that played to my advantage. Well, I mean, you've been doing this for what, sixteen, seventeen years now? It's the it'll be eighteen years. Eighteen in years. August. Yeah, you got to give you credit for every one of those years. I mean, you're on the road, you're running around. But Mark Henry today, if you could look at the Mark Henry who was waiting to go out the curtain for the debut in Philadelphia against Jerry Lawler, what is the one thing you might tell him? Can you think anything you might tell? Hindsight, um, I would say to get more rest and. Focus more on strength and not so much agility. Uh, I tried to do stuff I shouldn't have been doing, and <laughs> and that was one of the reasons why I got hurt. You know, I I, I said this. Uh, we talked privately before this, and I worry about you sometimes. I mean, injuries and stuff, because you're a pretty big guy, and the way you move around that ring, and, and all the superstars do it, but you in particular. I mean, you <laughs> it's crazy. You shouldn't be able to do things. I've even heard you could slam dunk a basketball. Is this true? I can. That's insanity. That's. No, I don't, I, it's been a while. It's been about. A year or two since I tried to dunk a ball, but um, I, I love basketball. It was my first sport, and um, as a youngster, uh, I used to throw it down pretty pretty often. No, and you know, you're definitely an athletic guy, which plays to your time in WWE. We love watching you, uh, but when you first came to WWE, again, you're the young guy. There's locker room leaders, which you're probably one of the longest tenure guys now, aside from what, like Undertaker, that's there. Yeah. Actually, it's always there. It's probably you. Yeah. Who was the guy you looked up to coming in? And and do you feel the guys look up to you now for advice? Oh, definitely. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, people come to me every day, asking my opinion on stuff, business and otherwise. So, um, it's uh, it's it's an honor to be in that spot. Okay. Now, as far as injuries, like we were just talking about a moment ago, I mean, you've had your share of being a big guy in this crazy industry. Uh, I know you've had some pretty bad ones. You said your knee was one, I think. Knee, broke ankle. Was there... Both rotator cuffs torn. Wasn't there one that... I don't know. Was it a... I don't know what it was. I feel like you were talking about developmental before. You were in developmental and a rope broke when you hit it or something? Yeah, I, I tore my quad. Oh, my God. And that was, that was pretty brutal. How scary was that? 
when well, you hear that rope snap. I'm lucky that I held on to the rope. If I hadn't held on to the rope, I probably would have took a your head a backwards dive and lawn darted myself. That would have been the, probably the worst thing that could have happened. And um, for all those young guys that are going out there and, and learning wrestling, the first thing they teach you is when, is to grab that top rope when you hit them. Yeah. And um, it'll save your life. It'll save mine. So does that? did you ever get nervous or you just knew it was a freak accident? Like when you, Was it hard for you to hit those you ropes know, again? For, for me to break the ropes, uh, I was moving pretty fast. And um, there might have been something defective because it haven't happened that often. Yeah. I've, in, in 18 years, I've only seen it happen twice, once with me and once with Big Show. Yeah. And both of us are big, giant guys moving at a high rate of speed. Yeah, so, like you're not supposed to move that fast yeah, at your size. So it's, it's kind of because you guys are... That much weight not supposed to be So it's something to kind fast. of be proud of if you think about it. That's, yeah, how, that's how good you are. I, I, I can't say that because <laughs> I went through about four months of pain that I wish I'd never t- experienced. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened. But again, learning experience, you know, when you're coming up. Yeah. Um, now, talk a little bit about your time with Mae Young because I know she's in poor health. They, they announced that last night on Raw. Yeah. Um, have you been in contact with her? Uh, what do you take from your relationship with Mae Young and working with her on television? No, I'll, I'll call her this afternoon. Um, Good. Just check in. Um, you know, she's always been one of those that uh, I look forward to seeing and, um, and, and, and vice versa. Yeah, she's she's super nice. I got an opportunity to meet her before too. She's she's Just kind of, she's pretty funny. Sweet woman. She can be really funny for being uh, the woman of her age. Yeah. Um, all right. So a lot of stuff going on in your career and SmackDown in town tonight. It's going to be awesome. I want to talk about something you know well. Strength. The world's strongest man here. All right. So in the WWE, as far as I can see, there's Mark Henry. You're freakishly strong. You lift cars, from what I understand and stuff. And I've seen you do it, actually. And then there's guys like, uh, newer guys like Antonio Cesaro, who seems pound for pound, pretty strong guy. Biggie he, Langston. He is beyond uh, just naturally strong. I mean, he, he trains hard, but he is uh, he's wiry. He's got that kind of strength that you don't expect a guy his size to have. Um, but above him, it would definitely have to be uh, Cena and Brock. And About Biggie. Biggie. Yeah. Um, Ryback. Um, Pal- who, who do you think even compares to you, honestly? Is there anyone that even measures up to your strength? It's not being arrogant. I mean, you've worked hard. Look no, at there, there's nobody that measured up to, like, lifting weights strength. Okay. But, um, um, you know, you got Cena benching. You know, five hundred and fifty. You just got a best, I think I heard. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but it was it was well over five hundred pounds. <laughs> and anybody that can lift five hundred pounds in a bench is a pretty strong guy. But the true measure of a man's strength is a squat and a deadlift. Okay. And um, uh, Cena and Big E, you know, they they well above everybody else. What are we looking at for your best squat and deadlift you've ever done? My best squad in the competition uh, was 985, or 958, <laughs> and 985. God. And um, best deadlift was was 903. Wow. Which is still the world record. It's the only record that I hold still. That's awesome. And um, the um, I did an unofficial 925. Wow. But it's still it's official to me. We've made it official. 925, he says it. That's insanity. Well, you know, my manager saw it. My manager's wife saw it. Um, Mad Dog, Jeff Madden in, in the gym at University of Texas. So it was a few people, but it wasn't in a competition. So That's got to feel good, though, to know you have that. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, awesome. yeah, it's, look at it's, yeah, it's one you know. of them I hang my hat on. You know, heck yeah, man. So uh, aside from lifting, a thing I have to compliment you on, and I don't even know if you are aware of this or you care. It all goes. I mean, I feel like you, there's there's different kinds of fans in wrestling. There's the casual fan. There's the fan that is just a big fan of wrestling, and there's these people online and stuff that think they know everything. I think it's very cool because you've conquered them all. You have a special place in the heart of all these fans, and not many guys can say that. And I point to the thing you did with John Cena when you came out and shed those tears and that amazing sports jacket. Where is that sports jacket? It's hanging up. It's is that your closet. jacket? That's mine. Oh, that's a great. My friend's a huge fan of that jacket. He asked me to ask you about that. It's, it's gonna hopefully if I Hall of Fame. So there. blessed to <laughs> be in the Hall of Fame. That that'll be the the picture that they use. It should be. But you you got tears going, and everybody everybody said he's really retiring because we'd heard that you might have a couple years left. You want to leave like on top of the game. So even myself, I pride myself on following wrestling, knowing a lot about it. I thought this could be the end for Mark Henry. The tears were coming, and then boom. What a 
great double cross. Like, how do you go out there as a performer? What mindset are you in when you know you're going out there to retire? Are you really thinking like you're treating this like you're really retiring? How do you get tears like that? Do you rub lemon in your eyes? How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> Man, it's just uh, um, just uh, I'm, I'm a performer at heart. I want to have the best performance. And I knew in order for me to make it real, it had to be real. And, um, you know, you just find a place in your mind where there's a trigger and you know, okay, I'm going to have to be emotional. And you can go from being happy to being emotional in a heartbeat if awesome. you're there. And uh, I was just mentally there. You sure were. And, and I've been, I've been, I, mean, I think I had you on the phone one other time before that even happened, but I was so hoping when I heard you were coming in, I couldn't wait to tell you kudos, dude. That was such a great moment in the last 15 years in wrestling. One of the top moments, just so real. That was a really good I job. I had so many people call about that. You know, I, you know, I, Arsenio Hall and Big Show and Stone Cold Steve Austin really? said that he's he's he smelled a rat and I was like, well, if you smell the rat, then you smell the rat in your house because <laughs> nobody saw that coming. And you know, he was like, ah, I've, I've been around too long, kid. I, I can smell a rat in the wood pile. And I was like, all, right, all right. Well, that, that's awesome that you got all that feedback. Because if he called you, even if you said he smelled a rat, you know there's enough respect there for him to call yeah, you. Yeah. So, uh, seriously, awesome with that. And before I let you go, I know that you started pretty young. How old were you when you started? Uh, I started lifting when I was 11, okay. uh, which was early in my opinion. If I was going to tell dads... Um, to put your son or your daughter on a training program, okay. I would say 12, 13. And um, I, it was kind of closer to that summer of being 10, 11. And so it was early 11. And uh, I, I don't think that's, you know, the best thing. Yeah, but you never stopped. It's working well for you. But it's good that you can acknowledge that and help other people and give back. Uh, as, as far as wrestling, you were a pretty young guy when you started. I don't need an age, but you're pretty young, right? Oh, yeah. So you kind of grew up on the road. Yeah, I you grew think up as a my, being a, a man. Yeah, um, I grew up, you know, learning from guys like Ron Simmons and Owen Hart, and they they were they were like mentors to me. Yeah, so oh. uh, I was able to, uh, I guess, embrace what they taught me, and um, I think I did all right. I think you're doing great. Uh, I do want to talk about this. Is where I'm leading with this. I'm being very long winded. I apologize, but this is uh, WWE put out a book a while ago, that, like Road Stories. And I want to talk to you about a story or two that you were mentioning that are like, absolutely incredible. Uh, MVP, you remember him, former WWE superstar. You're driving with him. Somebody's driving. I don't know who's driving. Somebody made a wrong turn. And you guys are going to be late to the show or the airport or whatever. You're worried. So you decide to make a U-turn. Well, when you make the U-turn, MVP says that your car gets stuck. I believe it was a, what's that, what do I have here? An Impala. And he said, you were very calm. You got out. And you said, hey, when I tell you to hit the gas, hit the gas. And then you lifted the back of the car out of the out of the thing you guys were stuck in? I did. And we <laughs> had, like, um, I was, uh, Primo uh, was in the car. And I, I I said, look, I need to get, anybody got some more raggedy T-shirts and stuff because the tires were spinning. Yeah. And I was like, we only got one shot at this. And um, we um, pulled out old T-shirts and stuff like that and, trash and everything that was in the car and jammed it and wedged it in under the tires and um i told him to punch it and he 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 let it go and i lifted and leaned in and it caught gravel and that's we got crazy. out that's nobody can do that you're like one of the only people in the world that could do that how awesome is that that's got to be a cool feeling come on i what'd you do yeah, dad i lifted I a to, car today i had to throw the shoes i had away because they were like I, we sunk down in the mud so much yeah? that one of them sucked off my foot, and I was like, damn. And I was like, I might as well leave the other one, too. So somewhere along the, the highways, sh- uh, <laughs> is, there's, a, there's a pair of shoes wedged down in the mud. Somebody's going to find it's gonna them. Gonna <laughs> it's going to be on eBay. It's going to be on eBay. All right, uh, really quick, another road story. Tony Atlas. You're driving with Tony. The car oh, breaks God. down, <laughs> and you're starving. I, I know, I know. What happens there? Can you explain that situation? Like, during that time I was on a diet, I was like 456, and I needed to lose some weight. So, you know, Tony was traveling with me, he was training and with me and stuff, and um, we get down the road and the tire blows out, and I'm 
Yes, because I had told him two or three times, Tony, stop, I'm hungry. <laughs> so, you know, basically I was like, man, we we stuck here. You know, I'm I'm going to call somebody that's behind us. It was Justin, right? The ring announcer. It said Justin in the book, Rogers Roberts. Justin Rogers and Roberts and um, – <laughs> Who was he with? I can't remember who he was with, but I was like, hey, man, stop at Subway <laughs> and get me a sandwich. <laughs> and uh, they brought they they pulled up behind us and uh, brought me a sandwich. <laughs> and um, um, Tony's out there trying to fix the tire, <laughs> and he's jacking the car up, and all of a sudden, like, the wheel is off the car. Yeah. The car is going, eh, just leaning like that. And I was like, Tony, you put the car in park? And he was like, "Oh, sure," oh. and then went in and put had to put the car in uh the in park. He, he still <laughs> oh, had the man. car. He had to, he still had it in neutral, and the jack is going up like that oh. and starting to lean. I'm like, "Man, you could have cut your feet off because both his legs he was holding, you know, trying to put yeah. the other tire on like this, and it was rocking forward, and both his legs are under the car." <laughs> oh my god! I was like. Man, you, you it was brutal, man. It was uh. <laughs> you're like he's having nightmares. Hey, I will say, uh, you know, there's all these rumors of the WWE Network one day. If the WWE Network ever comes about, that's a reality show. You and Atlas just traveling no. the country. <laughs> not enough Wouldn't money in the world. It. There's not enough money. <laughs> To put well, me and ba- Tony back together again. Well, you are here in Philly tonight for SmackDown. Thank you so much for coming. And tickets are still available. It's going to be a heck of a show. Twenty bucks—that's the lowest ticket. I mean, that's that's a bargain for what you guys do. You know, for family entertainment, best value. You know, you, you can't find it nowhere else in in, in America, and uh, especially for the quality of entertainment it's going to be. And um, you know, we also welcome all our military to uh, come to all our shows um, as long as you have your valid military license and you dress in your military gear, you get in free. That's pretty cool. uh, That's that's, really cool. That's one of the things I love the most about our company. That's a really cool thing. And you guys do, of course, the tribute to the troops, everything. You're very military-friendly, American-friendly, you know what I mean? That's that's a good thing. It makes me feel good as a fan also to see that. And and please, I'm telling you, if you've never been to a show, tonight's the night. There's a lot of heat at the Wells Fargo Center. So, And with the Divas there, there's going to be a lot, a lot of heat. A lot of heat. So uh, come on down. Again, 20 bucks, lowest ticket price, which is a bargain. Uh, You can pick up the tickets at the box office. Mark Henry, we don't know what's going on with that arm. I will see tonight. I don't know if you're going to – you seem pretty mellow now, but after the MRI, things could change, and if Brock's there, he could be done. Or maybe yeah. Paul Heyman. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm leaving Brock alone tonight, for real. Yeah? I'm uh, I'm more concerned with getting his arm right for the Rumble. No, that's right. In the Rumble, we wish you big things in that. And tonight, uh, a lot of health, and uh, just be careful tonight. I know if you get angry at all at anybody, I don't want anybody else to get hurt. Brother, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm meek as a lamb right now. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you for coming and visiting with the Social Network, Mark. I really oh, appreciate pleasure, it. Man. Thank you, buddy.